Welcome! In this video I am going to show you how to separate your data from your logic. This is good practice in general, but also comes in very handy if not essential for saving complex game states. And this is what this tutorial is going to lead up to. When it comes to saving the game, you don't want to be digging through every script and look for things that need saving. Instead, we make sure that everything that needs saving is already in one place. On a side note, it is also very useful for multiplayer games, though I am not going down that road as it is scattered with crushed indie dev dreams. Okay, so typically when you write a script, you have some data like floats, integer and so on, and some methods that change the data. So for example, this little guy, the cultist, has a cultist class that has a float for health and method called change health. So health is the data and change health is the logic. Now, if you want to save the game, some script like a save manager has to find all the cultists in the game and retrieve the health from them. And I think even an example as simple as that kinda sounds like this is a bad path to take. And we are not even talking about having a lot more variables in the script. So let's try a different method. First, we split our data into two categories. Values that are set by the designer, such as what is the maximum health of a unit, and values that are changed by the game mechanics, like health that you lose when you get hit by a brick. For the rest of this video, I'm going to refer to the values set by the designer as set values and the ones changed by the game as dynamic values. As you can imagine, it is the dynamic values that need to be saved when saving and loading a game. Uh, later on, the save manager is going to handle saving and loading the dynamic data while not really caring who uses it and so on, which keeps things nicely decoupled. Ok, now I'm going to implement this foundation into my game. You've already seen the cultist script, which is the logic part. Before we separate the dynamic values, I'm going to do the set values, so hopefully it becomes crystal clear how to decide in which category a value goes. A good place to store the set values is a scriptable object. So let's go ahead and create one called cultist genes. I used to call it stats, but that can be confusing since dynamic data is often called stats as well. Feel free to call it something like set values or fixed values, whatever reminds you that those values are set in stone. I think unless your game has some crazy weapons that change genes, that name serves a purpose. Let's open the script, replace mono behavior with scriptable object and add an asset menu so we can create instances. In here we can create some variables that will be set by the designers. So for example a float for walking speed, another one for maximum health and one for maximum energy. As mentioned before, all of these values are meant to be set by the game designer, not by the game mechanics. So to prevent other scripts from messing with them, I make them read-only. Using the read-only keyword would hide them in the inspector, so instead I make the fields private and turn them into properties that will return the private fields. By removing the setter, they are effectively read-only now. And to be able to set them in the inspector, we can just serialize the private fields. We can also use this to define a range for dynamic values. For example, in my game, I wanted to avoid that all cultists have the same energy at start, because that would mean they would all reach zero and go to sleep at the same time, which is pretty boring for the player. So we can make a field for min energy at start and max energy at start, and once again, turn those into read-only properties. On a little side note, I am holding down shift and alt, and then use the arrow keys to select multiple lines. After saving, we can create an instance by right clicking in the asset folder, name it cultist genes normal and set some values. In my game, I only used one type of cultist, they all move the same, look the same and so on. And that was a pretty bad decision because different types could have made the game a lot more interesting and it wouldn't have been hard to implement at all. Because all I have to do here is create another instance, call it cultist athletic and give him some different values. Ok, now it's time to move on to the dynamic data. All of the dynamic data will be stored in a class called cultist data. By removing the model behavior from it, we can create instances of it in other scripts and also serialize it. 
For now, serializing is useful to see the values in the inspector, but it will be even more useful when saving the game. And in this script, we are now going to put the dynamic data like energy and health, and those are just values that are going to change throughout the game by other scripts, meaning mechanics and so on. I will do the whole saving and loading in another video, probably the next one. So for now, I'm going to simplify things a bit. Instead of injecting the data from outside, I just make fields and serialize them. In a way, we can now create a new instance of the data class and save a reference to it in our private field. Right now, all the values in that class are zero and nothing is complaining about it, which is pretty bad. I think a good way to not forget setting some values is by doing it in the data class itself. For that, we are going to make a constructor that asks for a scriptable object of type Curtis genes. With that, it can set its own values when it gets created. It is still not a guarantee that you don't forget to set values, but I think it shouldn't happen too often. Whenever you add a new value up here, you set it in the constructor below. And here we can also make use of defining the range. So I'm going to set the energy to a random number between the min energy and max energy that we defined in the scriptable object. Now, of course, the Cartis class is complaining, which is good because we need to pass in the scriptable object. And now that we have the data separated, we can remove the public float health and let the change health method work with the health value that sits in the Cartis data script. We can make things a bit more readable by making a public field that returns the health, which is useful for other scripts that want to read the data. I like to offer this read option to other scripts, but if other scripts want to change the value, they will have to go through the public method change health. That way things are easier to keep track of, which can save a lot of time when debugging. And if you're following along the entire holy sock tutorial, you will have to make these quick changes in the state machine. The second one here was for testing only, so we can just remove that line. When everything is done, we can assign the scriptable object in the cultist prefab and test it. As you can see, when the game starts and awake is called, the cultist creates its own data class, the values are set based on the genes, and when I call the change health function, the data.health gets changed. Okay, I hope you learned something and if you want to see how to really make use of this and take it to the next level, watch out for my next tutorials, so subscribing would be a really good idea. I will separate the data even more by using the factory pattern to create and inject the Cardis data and that will set us up to make saving and loading pretty smooth. If you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, please leave a comment. Goodbye.